Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna set up a little Kubernetes cluster. And in order to do that you either need a bunch of Raspberry Pis or servers uh, or a lot of machines. But I have some spare CPUs and I don't have that many Raspberry Pis. I believe I have one Raspberry Pi but it's a Minecraft server at the moment, so it's uh, occupied. Uh, so I'm gonna use my computer for this, but if you have some spare computers, you can use that for this as well. In the case where I'm starting here, I have installed Debian 64 bits, and it has about a gig memory and uh, one CPU, so it's not gonna be the fastest. I've also not created the large disk for it. It only has three gigabytes of disk, but that's enough for this little example. But if you want to run a larger Kubernetes cluster, of course you need more disk, you need more CPU and so on. So it, it all depends on what you're gonna run. But what we are gonna set up today is a K3S cluster. And that's more for hobby testing it's not something that you will run in production but you will see all the uh, bits that are required for your cluster so you can know what to do when you actually have one running so it's a good thing to set up just for training and learning about kubernetes so the first thing i will do here using my computer is to set up some virtual machines so i have one virtual machine here cube server and then i have a and b so those are my nodes in my kubernetes cluster and in order for them to talk to each other i need to go into preferences and networks i'm using this virtualbox platform so you can actually download virtualbox and it's totally free so you can run it on your computer you just need some extra memory and some extra cpu in order to do that and on the network tab here i created a new network and that will have an ip range of 10.0.2 and then all, all of that will give me different numbers in the dhcp so it will actually handle all the all the problems of giving me an IP. So all the servers will have different IPs in this network. And another thing, if we just look at cube serve here and look at that setting on the network side, I have chosen to use this NAT network uh, that I just created. And that's my first adapter. But in, in my case, I also needed to actually log into the server and if you have a network a NAT network it will be able to talk to each other and it can also talk to the internet so that's good and that's maybe all that you need but i needed to actually set up one more network adapter which is a host only adapter and that's because i want to log into each of them using putty uh, because copy and paste didn't work well for me on virtualbox so that's why i have two network adapters here so now I will start up all these three servers and connect with Putty to them. So I'll be back. And we are back. And now we have started up all the different servers here or all the different machines. And I have logged into each and every one of them. And I also became super user on each of them just to make things easier for us. You can run sudo before every command but I haven't installed sudo on this very limited Debian distribution. So I've only installed the bare minimum that is required to have Debian running. And in order to run most of the commands in this setup, we need curl. So I will install that first. So on all of the machines, so apt install curl, and then we will do that on A, so uh, apt install curl so pretty much all of the machine we do the same thing you know when it comes to the start here so curl then we need to go back and answer yes we want that and yes and we also want yes so this will install curl on the machine so we are able to do network traffic and actually download the installing packages. So we'll start on the server here and we will copy over this little command here and this will run curl against a specific uh, address 
and run that as a shell script. So it will go out to get k3s.io, pick down that script, and then run it directly in your console. And if you are a little bit afraid about what this does, you can download it and look at it. It's not something sketchy, but it can be good to actually know what what's installed on your system and what is run. But as this is just something I will train on and something that is for fun, I don't see any harm in just running this script on those servers because I will wipe them afterwards. So I will just run this script and this is to install the server. So this is a machine that the other nodes will connect to. So I will run this first and it will download the release of KS3 and install it on my system. And this server, what I need from it is also to know its IP address and it will also create a token on the server that we also need to fetch in order to connect the other servers. So when it's done here but with starting it, the first thing I will run is IP address show. And another thing I can say about the different installations is in order to log into them, I needed to go in as root on the different machine, run DH client, and then the same IP shower that I run now in order to know which IP address to log into. So in the host machine system or the host only adapter, this machine has this IP address. But for the internal network between the different machine, we have another address up here in the 10.0.2 range, which is 16. So I will copy this over, uh, this little address here, put it over here, paste that in, and I will put it into script over here. You will see that in a little minute. Then I need to run a cat on a specific file here. So this is in the varlib rancher ks3 server node token. And so that over there you will find the token that we need in order to connect to this server. So this is a security token that tells the server that I know about your security so we can create a, a secure connection between each other. So I will copy that over as well to my document over here and put that into the command that we are going to run directly after this. So I will put it into the place where we it asks for the token. So if I come check this command over here, you see that I will run the curl again against the same address as we did before, but I will add the KS3, uh, K3S URL to the server port on this machine that I have here. And I also will put in the KS3 token, but it's not on this machine we want to run this. So we switch over to node A and I need to copy that again. So go over here, copy that. So I put that in and I will run that on node A and I will run that on node B. And this will install the software setting up the cluster against cube serve one. So this server will have these two nodes connected to it. So let's wait for that to run. So now both of those have installed and it went pretty fast. When we have done that, I also want some way to actually work with this cluster. I want some way to have metrics about the cluster. I want to have some way in order to uh, look at different things on the machine. I, at the moment I can run, let's say, uh, cube uh, CTL and then done uh, get nodes. And that should give me all the nodes in the system so I can see that I have my machines connected. So now we can see that I have cube A, cube B and also the master here. So those uh, are set up. I think I can run top nodes as well. And there, there we see how much memory and CPU these are working on. But you can see that cube A and B, we don't know about those yet because we haven't uh, gathered enough, enough uh, statistics for those. 
I run it again, we see that now it knows how much they are actually working and they are not using that much CPU, but a bit uh, memory. So now I want to install a dashboard so we can work with this. And then I will just run this qctl apply dash f, so a specific file, and then I just point to a YAML file on the internet for Kubernetes dashboard uh, 2.0.0 beta 6. There might be a newer version when you are trying this out. I follow the guide on the Kubernetes homepage for installing the dashboards. You will probably easily find that guide. And if you just want to follow the instructions I have uh, done here, you can go over to my GitHub page and I will have done a write up there as a gist so you can see all the steps there. And I also will write about this on my blog and some other places. So you can find this information and follow along if you like uh, later on. So now we have created the dashboard. So this will install on my nodes. But if I do this, I don't have any way to actually log into the dashboard. I need to have an account in order to log in. And in order to do that, we will create two files. So I will use cat because I haven't installed any vi or anything like that. So I can't edit files easily that way. So I will run cat and then backwards tick. So I will send something back to it until end of file. And I will put that into the service account .yaml. And then I will copy the things needed to create the service account and then type end of file. So this is our API version one. It's a service account I want to start and I want to add the metadata admin users and I want the admin user to be able to look at uh, or be a part of the cube system. So the Kubernetes system. So in that namespace, I want to create an admin user. And then I also need to set a specific role for this admin user. And that is done with this uh, cluster role YAML. There we go, cluster role. And I will copy in some more code here. So this is the API version uh, RBAC. So that's a specific version of authorization that would create a pretty long uh, token for us in order to log in later. Uh, so this is an Airb uh, uh, this is the version one of that. And it's a cluster role binding. So it, we will bind the admin user to the cluster role cluster admin uh, on the Kubernetes system. So the subject will be the admin user on the Kubernetes system. And we will do an end of file there as well. So that will create the actual role for us. And in order to actually apply these, we do like we did before, we will run this kubectl apply dash f and the service account. And then it tells us that the admin user have been created and we will run the same command for the cluster role. And it will tell us that the admin user cluster role has binding has been created. Now we need to run a pretty long and a bit strange command here. We will run kubectl on the name, uh, name uh, space cube system. And we will describe the secrets and then we do run the same on the n uh, cube system get secret and we will grep for the admin user and we will walk out um, what we see there and if we run this we will just get the piece of uh, the admin user login uh, stuff and down at the bottom here we will see that the token that we need to log in is this long thing so I will copy that over to my document here. Uh, so I don't I remember that for when we are actually logging into the system. But we are not done there, we actually need to uh, create a port forward as well. So we can actually log into this system. And I believe that the uh, address for this Kubernetes system for my host was the same yet yeah, it was uh, 112. So I don't need to change this uh, uh, command here. So we will do a port forward 
for the Kubernetes dashboard. So that's the namespace we want to do a, a port forward to. And we want it to go into the, um, into the path of service Kubernetes dashboard. So we don't need to add anything extra because everything is segmented under different paths but we want to just go to that port and be able to use the system. Then we will uh, port forward the 10.443 into 4.4.3, which means that we will uh, use that port externally. And we will also say that it we should use the address of our host system here. So we can actually go there from our computer. So if we do that port forward, then I will switch over to uh, my Firefox browser here. So now I've started up the Firefox browser and we will go to HTTPS slash slash 182 and then 112 10 3. And if I go to that address and the important part here that I actually went here with Firefox, if I used Chrome, Chrome has a setting that if you run HTTPS, you need to have a valid certificate. Uh, but Firefox is a little bit more lenient. So I can actually say that, okay, I know that this certificate is not right, but I will accept the risk and continue. And that will give me this login screen Kubernetes dashboard where you can either put in a config or a token. And remember, we copied this long token before. So I will put that in here and sign in. I don't save that. And now we have our dashboard for the Kubernetes running here. We can see that this is the current setup for, for this default namespace. We can look at the, uh, let's go over and look at the dashboard namespace here. So this is the dashboard namespace. We see the CPU usage for that namespace. We see how much memory we are using at the moment. We see that we run two different service here. So we have one pod that is a, a dashboard metrics scraper. So it will actually fetch the metrics for us. And then we have another pod that runs this actual dashboard that we have here. And if we create more namespaces, we can put other applications into this Kubernetes cluster. At the moment, we have actually set up our own cluster. We have all the things needed in order to try Kubernetes out and install different applications and do all the things that we want to do with this technology. Uh, I hope that you find this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. I hope that you got inspired to install your own cluster and try Kubernetes out. There are a lot of uh, different companies that are working with Kubernetes at the moment or want to start uh, working with the cloud. And if you are searching an employment to any of those companies, it could be good to actually set up your own cluster, try it out, figure out how to work with different images and set up pods and scale them up and down and so on. So this is a good way to actually try the technology out in order to be more informed for your next uh, job interview or something like that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And if you have any comments, suggestions or questions about this video, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.